Oh my James, you gotta see this. I can't believe what Let's I'm see seeing. Hello everybody, I'm James Harding, Director of Sales and Marketing for Riverton Piano Company, and I have with me today a nice little spinet piano. But James, is it? Is it what? Is it a spinet piano? Yeah. Well, let's see here. It's less than 40 inches tall, so that well, checks out. It's a spinet, yeah. But is it a nice spinet? Well, that's, I guess, a better question, isn't it? <laughs> is it really <laughs> a nice spinet? what we're here to find out. And here to help us do that is my friend and registered piano technician, or RPT for short, Mr. Tim Montecalvo. Tim is an independent piano technician in Sun City, Arizona, so he's the perfect guy to help me look this piano over. And before we even get started, let me recommend that you seek out a certified RPT like Tim before you buy a used piano, especially if you're considering a used piano from a private home. Uh, his experience could save you hundreds, even thousands of dollars. And to help you connect, we'll put a link to Tim's website in the description below, and we'll post his contact information at the end of this video. So you can contact him when you need a little help. An RPT like Tim evaluates all of Riverton's used piano inventory, and that's why we include a warranty with all of our used pianos. We can give our clients the peace of mind that they deserve. If you'd like to check out our used piano inventory, you can find it at rivertonpiano.com online. Just click the pianos button, logically, and you can see what we have up and ready to go. Uh, Tim, thanks for taking the time to be with us today. We, we really appreciate you being here. Um, now, can you tell me, what's the important aspect of you being a registered piano technician? How is that different from just a piano tuner? Well, a uh, registered piano technician has put in hours the, and the, the tests they have to go through are more than just tuning. A normal tuner or a tuner that doesn't have the experience may not know how to set the pin. So the tune may not hold. Uh, so it's just like any other so, profession, really. The more yeah. education you get, the more Correct. skilled you are That's at right. the work. Yeah. And an RPT learns not just to tune the piano, but maybe to adjust how it feels and fix anything that may be broken inside. That's Is that right? right? That's right. Okay. Yeah. Great. So how many years have you been doing this? Uh, 20 plus years. 20 plus years. Yeah. So tell me, how long would you say it took you to get good at evaluating a piano like this? It takes years. Uh, years. Years. Uh, because you can, uh, you can find the main things, but yeah. there's, some, there's some hidden things you learn through experience to look out for. So hidden things, <laughs> yes, you say. Huh? Hidden yes. things, well, it's right. funny you should mention that. That's kind of why we're here with this video. So I think you know most folks at home can tell you know basic things they can see that might be wrong with the piano. Right. Uh, so what we're going to do here is take a look at this piano and try to evaluate some of those things and some of the other hidden things. So at first glance, just looking at it, what do you think? Well, from the front and everything, it looks looks nice. It looks like a nice piece of furniture. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but looks can be deceiving, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> We've all seen That's that. For sure. Okay, so let's open up the piano and show the folks at home here the top 10 hidden clues that a piano, any piano, may not be in good shape. Well, as you can see, the keys here are not leveled. And the, the one that sticks out the most, you can tell, is uh, right here. Now, if I move this up and down, you can see it. They should all move at the same time when you do that. Wow, you can really see yeah. the change there. Yeah, you so, can just look down a piano line when you go to buy a piano, and you can see uh, the straight line, if it's a straight line. So what's the big deal? If the piano keys aren't level, why, why does that matter? It will affect your playing and how it feels. It'll affect the, the feel and the volume and, and it will affect even the tone, believe it or not. We've done oh. experiments where we've bedded the key frame and leveled the keys and it really does affect everything. So you're saying that a key that stands up kind of like this one does might actually sound different than the other keys because it it's could. not properly on, adjusted. Yes, on a, especially on a quality piano, you can really tell the difference. Great, Yeah. all right. Now, what about key spacing? I see here that some of these are real close together and some are not. Yeah, Why is that a big see, deal? You can see the spacing is really bad. Um, eventually, these are going to, like, these two are getting really close, and eventually they'll start rubbing. 
there again, it affects the up and down movement of the keys. Okay. You know. Uh, next, what we like to do is um, find out if the if there's any sounds we don't like, like ringing, buzzings, notes that last longer than they should. Um, so when I play a chord, if I just play through the piano, okay. you can, <laughs> you, that ringing isn't supposed to be there. <laughs> What's that causing that to keep ringing like that? Well. Uh, Chances are, well, love, we have to level the keys, and then that affects what's called the dampers. And so I'm sure the dampers are not covering the strings. So, so basically, what, what you're saying is when, when you play a key on a piano, the hammer hits the string and it makes a sound. Yep. When you let go of the key, this damper falls down to stop the sound. That's correct. Right. Leans so, against the string and stops music. So that's not, that's not happening That's here. not happening. Okay. Okay, so um, you were saying earlier that the next thing you kind of look for is whether or not the keys go down and come back up like they're supposed to, right? Yeah, that's a key dip. You can see from this one, this goes down way too far underneath the, the white uh, keys in front. And uh, so we know it's off. So know. with that key going down too far, does that mean yeah. it's harder to play? Uh, no, it, well, it takes more movement, right? Mm -hmm. And then chances are you might be, the hammer would run into issues against the string, possibly. All right. But the keys don't get stuck down? They come back well, up okay? Um, on uh, some older pianos, keys could get stuck, but these ones, the bushings are so loose, you have the uh, other problem of they're just being so bouncy and it's all over sloppy. The, Yeah, sloppy. Got That's it. a good word. On a uh, older piano, it would be normal to see worn, uh, grooved hammers. But uh, what we, what I want you to see here is how this hammer right here um, is totally misshapen. So somebody tried, looks like somebody uh, tried to file it and didn't do a very good job. And uh, that creates all kinds of problems because it's so far back, I think you'd have to replace um, that yeah. hammer. So this is a situation where somebody tried to work on the piano, but they messed it up and now you have to replace the part entirely. Yes. Yeah. Wow. But they all have deep grooves in them. So yeah. whatever was done, uh, it's been played enough to where you would have to change these hammers. Oh my. This is a mess. <laughs> yeah. This is not a well taken care of piano, that's uh, for sure. <laughs> you know, honestly though, I, to be fair, I think there's a whole bunch of pianos that look like this on the inside. Yeah, look yeah. what I found here. Oh yeah. There's all kinds of little stuff in it. Oh, we have a little unicorn. Yeah. And I just hope I don't find any dead animals. <laughs> you find dead animals in piano? Have, you found? Yes. Oh my. Yeah, mice. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Oh. There you go. All right, well, thank you. Now we have these extras. <laughs> yeah. What, we're well, looking at the bridge. What is the bridge? Where do we find this that? This is the, the base bridge right here. And this, so the strings go and, up and over it like a car goes over a bridge, right? Yeah, and the treble bridge goes up. So you'd have to remove the action and everything to get a good look at that. But just looking at the base bridge, I can tell uh, there's cracks um, in the center part of it and uh, what I would do is loosen the strings and try to see if these pins are super loose. Okay. And then, uh, because that will affect all kinds of noises and could affect tuning. So, okay. Yeah. So if the bridge is cracked, it's, is, is that a big problem or is that pretty easy to yeah, fix? Yeah, because it takes a lot to repair a bridge. Really? You're talking hundreds of dollars. You know? Oh, no. Yeah. How does the soundboard look? Um, we have it problems? It does, does not look good. Uh, there's no super big cracks, but if you look over here to the side, you can see the uh, splintering. It almost looks like water dripped down there at one time. And so, yeah, it's just mangled on now, the corners. Why, to me, the soundboard looks a little strained. Is that normal? It looks like very cheap. 
Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. It is that like a look plywood like, or is that's that? what it looks like? Really? I don't know. I've I've never seen one that looks like plywood before. But um, usually, soundboards are made out of spruce, some kind of spruce or yeah, a good solid wood. Good that solid actually, yeah. wood. Yeah. But this huh. does not look like a very high quality piece of wood here. <laughs> Now we're gonna take a look at the ribs. Now, am I right in sort of assuming the reason they're called ribs is they serve a similar function to my ribs, right? They hold that's, everything in place. That's correct. They actually hold, the ribs actually hold the soundboard in place so you have good tone. So I think a lot of people would think that a soundboard is flat, yeah, but it's, it's not flat. No, it's actually like crown. the bottom of a guitar or violin. There's yeah. a curve to it. There's a curve. And these ribs keep the same curve mm -hmm. throughout That's the life correct. of the piano. So how do the ribs look? Uh, well, I, I've wiggled them and they don't seem loose, but there's a sloppy glue all over and the ribs themselves don't look like they match the soundboard. So I don't know if I don't know if it was a repair. It's just real. Well, and but I there is sloppy glue. I see down here some glue that. Yeah really is messy. It's, so this could this be could be one a, of those restoration attempts, right? Where they they don't really tell you what restoration means, <laughs> but they've come in and glued a piece of plywood in place of a soundboard and yeah, I, basically, you know, they've made it where they it looks like it works. Yeah, I don't know. It's interesting. A, it's just terrible. So what are you doing now, Tim? Um, I'm looking and checking the pins and the strings for uh, rust, which there is um, quite a bit as you get down into the fifth octave down here. Rust is a bad thing on strings because it leads to fatigue and you could break strings while you're tuning. All right. So when your strings are rusted, it means they've gotten wet or humid at some point. Somehow. Yeah, yeah. and they've That's corroded. Right. And so they're just a ticking time bomb, just waiting to snap. Yeah. I've also heard that when you look at the pin right here and you see this winding, the string winding here, yeah. one thing you can look for is to see if that winding is pressed up against the plate, the metal that's, part. That's here. exactly right. I, you, I, they, they should not be in many spinets. Um, well, cheaper, they, they do touch the plate. So I'm yeah. looking, yeah. I don't see any on this one, which no, is No, they good haven't thing. been pounded in. Sometimes it happens because they pound the pin in. So why would somebody pound the pin in? Okay, so when I'm working for a, a tuning a piano for a customer and they have an old piano, and the I can tune it up to the sound, but when I take off my tuning uh, hammer, it, it doesn't hold the tune. I will sometimes take a, a special tool called a punch and I will hit it with a hammer to have the pin grab a little more bite so it'll hold the tune. So the idea here really is to just try to make sure that the pin is staying where you want it to stay. Exactly. But you don't have this winding pressed up against the metal to where it shows they've had to hammer this in. Right. That's and sort I of a hint that it's not holding tune, right? That's right, yeah. All right. We're looking at the pin block to see uh, what we can see. Um, what does the pin block do? The pin block holds these pins in place, and if it's not good, then it won't, your piano won't hold the tune. So basically, where you were touching right there, those are the pins. These are the pins. That metal thing behind it, that's the plate. Cast, yeah, the yeah, plate. cast iron. Cast iron And plate. then the pin block is behind that. And the pin block is behind that. Okay, Correct. all right. We can't tell by looking at the front. Some pianos you can, but because the cast iron covers the pins, you can't tell if there's cracks right there. Um, you have to know how to check that. You have to, um, well, you'd know by checking the tuning pin. <laughs> this is one of those things you almost really can't do at home, right? Yeah, you, you kind of have to know. See it necessarily. Um, Got it. Yeah. Oh my, James, you gotta see this. I can't believe what, what I'm what seeing. Well, I was check. We we were just looking at the pin block, and behind that are the posts and the frame, and. Uh, it's all separating. I mean, you can see it just coming oh apart. Gosh. It's not even a straight line. This piano is literally falling apart. So, I mean, I don't it's, think I've ever seen that before. No, like, it literally is separating the very, frame. Very few times, yeah. Oh, it's wow. It's just really coming apart. It's mind-boggling. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. 
Wow, that was a wow. relatively shocking reveal. <laughs> that was something, let me tell you. So, okay, Tim, wow. let's ignore the frame issue, the fundamentally unfixable part. But okay. uh, looking at everything else, let's say the frame was in good shape, looking at everything else in the piano that needs repair, how much do you think it would cost to fix this piano, make it playable again? Well, at least you're going to be up around $1,000. $1,000? Yeah, because there's just... You're going to be looking at hammers and dampers and regulation and just all kinds of work. Yeah, tuning and yeah, it's going to be up there. And since a piano like this is really only worth what a few hundred dollars yeah. on the market, it's not really worth fixing, is it? No, no, no it's not. <laughs> well, clearly the piano is not in good shape as advertised. And actually, that happens a lot more than you might think. In fact, about 90% of the pianos that people contact us and offer here at Riverton are declined because they cost more to fix than we could sell them for. Yeah. And without an experienced RPT like Tim here, it can be impossible to find some of these problems. And that's why even an experienced piano pro, like myself, relies on the expertise of a registered piano technician to help evaluate used pianos. It's worth for us whatever small fee they may charge to make sure we're not falling into a money pit like this piano. So Tim, thank you very much for being here. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, tell the folks at home, how do they get a hold of you if they need a little technical support? Uh, you can contact me on my cell phone, 360-913-1029. Uh, or visit me at tunertim.com. Great, and you cover Sun City and Peoria and Glendale and all sort of the Western Valley. Yeah, the, Sun area. City West and Sun City and great. Peoria. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. So. Well, thanks again, we appreciate that. And remember folks, if you're considering a used piano, please contact an RPT like Tim for his expert opinion. And if you're looking for a great no risk used piano, well, we have a ton of options on our <laughs> website. Visit rivertonpiano.com slash online and click the pianos button for some great certified and warrantied piano deals. So let's hear from you. Did you have a bad experience with a used piano? Did we miss something on the list you think we should have included? Tell us your thoughts in the comments below. We do our best to answer every question we get, so ask away. And thanks for watching this video. May the love of music lead you to life's greatest joy. We'll see you next time.